some people do apply the definition of deal breaker, like rigidly, as in run now, fast, don't look back. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Taylor Burrows and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'd like to talk to you about red flags. I've written so many lists for both men and women about red flags for the opposite sex. I mean, if I compiled them, it would be a book. It's inevitable that when I present one list, someone offended will always ask for the other one. Please do your research. Look at all the videos that are available on my YouTube channel, on my Instagram account, and also my Twitter page. There's lots and lots of information available from both sides. And I don't only like to talk about red flags. I also like to talk about green flags, the good things, the vetting affirmations that you want to look out for to know that you're headed in the right direction, that someone is a good potential match. But also, I think it's really important to define and apply what red flags mean. People use it differently. Sometimes people use red flags as just a warning sign of, okay, that needs further investigation. And if you're really interested and you have curiosity, maybe there are other redeemable qualities, you will take more time to understand what is the whole package that this person is presenting. Maybe that red flag is really just like a, an amber flag and uh, it's not a deal breaker. But some people do apply the definition of deal breaker, like rigidly, as in, Run now, fast, don't look back. Yeah, I mean, if you have more than one and it starts piling up, it's certainly a deal breaker indication. But if it's just one, don't freak out. There can be extenuating circumstances. And if you really do consider the person a potential match and there are lots of green flags and redeemable qualities, that's good. But Make sure that you are seeing the red flag for what it is. You cannot obscure red flags with green flags, ladies or gentlemen. So make sure that you stay objective and grounded and logical as you are assessing your connection. Are you ready for the list? All right. Number one, entitlement. I don't know what's in the water, but entitlement is such a big issue. It's the number one red flag. If she's entitled and she is spoiled and she expects to be given everything, like she has all these very high standards for you as her partner, but she gives very little in return, like she's not making any effort. She just doesn't even, it doesn't even click. Like it doesn't register to her that you can't expect to be treated like a queen and yet not treat your partner like a king. I don't get it. There's some kind of disconnect here. And if that perpetuates when she's called out or when you challenge her, or when you push back, or I don't know, like if she just continues to act like a spoiled brat and she thinks that she can get away with murder uh, just because she's a woman, just because she's pretty, just because she has a good job. I don't know what her reason is, but either way, entitlement is number one. Watch out for this red flag. Now, this also includes being highly individualistic, which is selfishness, basically, but it's thinking about oneself as the center of the universe. So that's where it comes into like the princess mode, being highly entitled, selfish, spoiled. But because she's feeling like that and she thinks of herself that way, she's going to avoid commitment because she wants to do what's best for her whenever she has to make a choice. And the last part of this one that I wanted to mention to you is this comes off as disloyalty. If she is thinking of herself first, her loyalty is to her and her alone. Being loyal to somebody else means sometimes putting aside your wants, your desires, your preferences, your immediate sort of impulses in order to think about the bigger picture, think about somebody else and what they need and what they expect from you, not just what you want to do in the moment. So this is one of the really important ones. And, you know, maybe one time she acts like that. But if this is a personality trait, this is a big red flag. Okay, number two, maybe she's pushy and controlling, kind of aggressive and wants to rush things. She wants things to be on her timeline. It's kind of like <laughs> going back to number one with the entitlement. It's like, ah. She wants to run the show and take charge, or she plays the victim, she's emotionally manipulative, or she runs hot and cold and she's kind of fickle. It's also manipulation, or it could be a sign of like an addictive compulsive personality, very impulsive, erratic psychology here, which is 
a concern. When I have clients who relay some of these signs, the, the hairs on the back of my neck kind of stand up and I'm like, okay, this sounds like a drama queen. This sounds like maybe she's not so stable and you really need to watch out for this. Do not give a lot of rope with some of these red flags. It's like, mm, you want to do just a little bit of checking, but ultimately they need to be nipped in the bud. All right. Number three, poor discipline whether that's with her finances, her health, her fitness, her grooming, her wardrobe, like her hair, her nails, her skin, her teeth, everything. Like she just doesn't have that consistency and that sense of discipline, which is really a sign of self-respect, but I'll get to that later. That self-respect, that integrity, and that self-care, right? Like if you can't take care of your own body properly or your own finances properly, I mean, how are you going to take care of other people? Not that you have to mother them unless you're having a child, but <laughs> that may come later on. First of all, you want to know that she takes care of herself because how a person does one thing is generally how they do everything. And it's a sign of responsibility. If you can commit to something and take the responsibility of having that consistent discipline to take care of it every single day, I mean, maybe you know, give or take, you might like skip a few days. But if you don't have a good relationship with responsibility, if you don't have a good relationship with discipline and consistency, then this is not going to bode well for someone that you want to make your wife and the future mother of your children. I would say this is a resolvable one. Be curious, see if there's other redeemable qualities, other green flags. Maybe she's got the whole package and you can help develop this aspect in her. So I would say this is more of an amber flag than a red okay, flag. Here's another potential amber flag. Number four, having a dirty and disorganized residence, house, apartment, wherever she lives. Maybe it's just even like a quarter in that residence and her vehicle. So if she is just not kempt or if it's actually dirty, disorganized all over the place, she doesn't really attend to it, then that's a problem. Now this can be fixed. Maybe she hasn't had good role models in this, but maybe if you can teach her or she hires somebody to help out, she can learn how to organize. She can learn how to clean. She can look up YouTube videos. Heck, you can learn so much on YouTube these days. But this is something that you can try to inspire more development in. But that upkeep is really important again for having a wife and a mother. So make sure that she has some level of receptivity to getting better at this area. Okay, number five, one of my favorite topics. She dates around to avoid feeling lonely or bored. This is a really high maintenance trait in anyone really, but if, if a woman can't be single, and I mean really single, I've been posting a lot about this lately because I really wanna emphasize this point. Being single does not mean you're just not in a committed, serious relationship and you can do whatever you want. Being single means you're not hooking up with people and you're not in no strings attached, friends with benefits, the list goes on type of open relationships. You have to have a healthy relationship with yourself first and foremost. If you can't demonstrate that, this is a problem. So men, look out for a woman who can demonstrate that she can be single, that she can be alone. It's not the ideal state to be in, granted, but there's gonna be a time and a place to be alone and you need to know that she can handle it, that she's not just gonna seek validation from every Joe Schmo and she's not gonna be putting herself out there in you know precarious situations. This is one of those more rigid red flags for sure. Number six, she lacks family values with no integrity, no self-respect, and no healthy role models. This is one of those fundamental ones as well. Now, you can have an unhealthy family of origin, right? Like you can come from an unhealthy family, but still make it work. Figure it out. Bring yourself out of that. Break the cycle. Be a healthy parent for the future generation. So I'm not so I'm saying that if she just had like a bad family upbringing, then it's she's out. I'm saying if she hasn't developed those qualities of self-respect and integrity and finding those core values by developing healthy role models outside of her household, then she hasn't internalized the things that are most important that define someone's character. You cannot define someone's character for them when you're vetting. Like you can't shape someone like that. They have to have a sense of self, but we'll also get to that a little bit later. So make sure that you know that she's lacking this. This is a big one. Definitely not a good idea to pursue a woman with this red flag. 
Number seven is a big one. If she lacks accountability, humility, if she shifts blame or makes excuses, she can't admit when she's wrong, apologize, and self-correct her behavior, it's going to be tricky, right? Because everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. We all have flaws. If you don't have accountability and humility, then everything else kind of falls apart. I did make a really good list because all of these things are so fundamental that there's a lot of other things that are built on top of them. And if these things are missing, then some of the essential pieces for a healthy ideal relationship are not going to be there. I would put this high on the list as well. I mean, there's really just a couple that are maybe amber flags, but this is another rigid red flag that you need to look out for. Humility, accountability, can she like admit when she's wrong and take responsibility for her own behavior is so important. Number eight is another really important one. Is she unable to regulate her emotions? Is she easily triggered? So many women have this problem. They're highly sensitive. I mean, women are sensitive, yes. Women are emotional, yes. But being easily triggered and someone who cannot regulate their own emotions, okay, maybe this could be an amber flag because you can learn to develop self-regulation and how to take care of your own emotions through self-care, mindfulness, and just healthy practices and habits. But that easily triggered part, that, I mean, obviously triggered, right? It could be a pathology somewhere in there that she needs to work through. So let's just say she's wounded and she needs healing. And if she's not receptive to your suggestions or influence, and if you can't create that secure attachment with her so that she can heal and she can develop those skills, then she's got to seek it elsewhere. And if she doesn't do the work, it's not going to work. It's really like, it's just, so it's an amber flag that becomes a red flag depending on how she handles it. How does she try to resolve this? How does she try to learn these skills that are needed in a healthy relationship? But there's another part of this. Does she get disrespectful or even malicious when she's angry or when you're in like a heated conflict or something like that, right? Because you're going to have conflict, even in raised voices, you know, things get stressful. But how does she handle that? Knowing someone's stress language, I talk about this a lot, but when you're in conflict, if she stoops to that level where she just takes your legs out, but if that disrespect keeps showing up, that's a deeper problem. And you can't just sweep that under the rug. You can't just ignore it. You can't just forgive and forget and have that happen over and over again. You need to really discover what is that about? And this is still in the same category uh, so it's probably because she's wounded and she needs to resolve maybe some previous trauma. Encourage her to seek some kind of help and see what happens. But depending on where you are at in this relationship too, if it's early on, I would say, you know, why don't we just take care of ourselves and see what happens before we really try to pursue this relationship? Because I respect you and I care about you and I want you to be healthy. And I think this is just going to complicate things. So I would definitely consider stopping the relationship if it is early on. If it's not, if it's further along, then maybe just be there to support her through the process of healing and see how she handles that. Number nine, married to her career. <laughs> this one is kind of a fun one. It's a very controversial one. This is obviously going to trigger a lot of feminists out there and white knights. There's nothing wrong with a woman being educated. There's nothing wrong with a woman you know, having a successful work life at all. But if she's married to her career, I chose this terminology purposely. If she is fixed on prioritizing her career over all else, there is no space for you, gentlemen. She, you can't be married to your career and a husband and plan to have a family. You can have a career, but your priority has to be what comes first for the family, what is best for your family and your spouse. Because ultimately, even before the children, it's you and your spouse and your team. If you can't figure out how to make your husband and your family your first priority over your career, it's a deal breaker. That's just my opinion. As a person who was previously married to her career, I found a way around it. I found a way to put my personal life first. And this was such an important, pivotal shift in my life. I cannot explain this enough. I've written on it. I've talked about it. But I probably need to do a whole video on it. But talk about it early. Talk about it 
a lot, you know, like you don't have to be punitive or persecutory when you're addressing it. She needs to know that you're on her side, that you want her to be successful. You want her to have her passions and her purpose and to feel like she's of value and she's bringing something to the table. And I talked about this recently, like she's able to give her gifts to the world, like whatever your special talents are that you don't want to go to waste. Those are God given skills and talents. So find a way to use them, but not through marriage to a career. I hope that clarifies it because I know I'm going to get a lot of responses on that one. Number 10, she lacks feminine qualities like class, race, elegance, empathy, patience, joy, playfulness, and vulnerability. These are all very important qualities of femininity that the woman should have. Not that she needs to be just this. Like, I'm not a trad woman. Like, I'm not pursuing and advocating for the extreme version of trad life. She has but to have some kind of amenability to these qualities, right? Like, you, you want a woman to have the masculine qualities too. But if she rejects her feminine traits, her feminine energy, this is a really bad sign. You want a healthy, integrated woman who is connected to those traits, that she brings those elements to your life because you need that complementarity and that compatibility and that sexual polarity in order to have a successful, happy, healthy relationship and marriage for the rest of your life. So definitely look for these qualities. And if she lacks them, there is not that much room for cultivating them like by your influence. I would say the one thing that you can really focus on is bringing your masculinity to the table, not like in a in a negative domineering way, but just if you are a healthy masculine presence and you are integrated in that energy, then she should be <laughs> getting connected with her femininity too because what happens is when women are single, their masculine side will come out because they have to take care of themselves and do everything. But once they settle into a relationship with a healthy masculine integrated man, then that femininity should really come out. If it doesn't and you address it and it still doesn't, red flag. Number 11, she holds an extreme ideology like feminism, for example, and has little capacity or tolerance for anybody else's opinions or just nuance in general. It's kind of like adopting SJW, which is social justice warrior, or MSM, which is mainstream media beliefs, regurgitating what you see on the news, what's perpetuated all over the internet or on newspapers and news programs and Hollywood TV, all the programming out there in the world. They're just totally caught up in all of that. If they are, you have <laughs> a little bit of wiggle room just to see if they're receptive. If they have kind of that light bulb moment come where whatever it is that you're explaining to them makes sense and they're like, oh yes, wow, I've been feeling like something was missing or something wasn't quite clicking. If they're receptive to that, then you may have a foot in the door. But if they're not, if they push back, if they're still really rigid about their belief system to that extreme, if you're not that way too, then it's definitely a deal breaker. Number 12, she has a poor sense of self, no self-esteem, no self-worth, just no real identity of her own. She doesn't have a genuine character and she has poor boundaries and she has poor self-awareness. And especially with the poor boundaries, I would say this is essential. Like if you, you're going to be in a rescuing her situation if she doesn't have these things. So it is a red flag in the extreme, but it's not because she's maliciously doing something wrong. It's probably because she's pretty broken and you can try to help guide her to figure these things out. But again, if she's older, I would say no. If she's younger and you want to give it a try to see if she can come around and you know, maybe she has those internal resources that once you catalyze that insight, not you necessarily as a therapist, but if she is able to seek out that help and she grows and develops these things, then maybe. So I'd say an amber flag slash, depending on age and circumstances, maybe like a deal breaker red flag. Number 13, this is the last one, guys and gals, doesn't want kids with you. Now, some people don't want kids. I, I know. I've talked about this before. I, I understand. Some people just don't want to procreate. Some people can't procreate. 
Some people need to adopt. Some people need a surrogate or whatever other situation that they prefer. Oftentimes, a woman just doesn't want to have kids with you. And if she's really fixated on not having kids, and this is something that you want, especially, it's a red flag because you are sacrificing your legacy for this woman when you probably have a lot of other options. And if you get really deep into it, it's going to get harder and harder to extricate yourself from this emotional attachment. Consider the future of your children. Now, if for some reason you're just like, oh my God, she's amazing. She can't have kids. Because if a woman really, really genuinely loves you and respects you and she's healthy, she's going to want to have kids with you. So if she doesn't want to have kids with you, this is a problem. If she can't have kids or has some other rationale that makes sense, then you want to accommodate that because she's the whole package. Okay. So I hope you understand the nuance on that one, but that's a good one. And that was the list of the 13 red flags to watch out for in women. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, if it was worthwhile hearing my thoughts on this topic, do give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you just caught this on the Explore page, that's great. But stick around for more videos every week. I'm Taylor Burrows. Thanks for watching. Ciao.